Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we got a very special vlog and review or showcase for you today. Today we'll be taking an unboxing and review and showcase of the uh, new egg shuffle combo we received uh, and got last time on the last vlog. So let's unbox here quickly from new egg. Uh, here is the Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX. This is a very nice AMD ITX motherboard. So if you're looking for something for a small form factor build, uh, this board um, should be your go-to option along with the ASUS and the ASRock high-end, I believe the uh, ITX slash AX model. Uh, those three boards from the B550 line are very, very nice. They don't have cooling fans as far as I'm aware of on the GPUs, unlike the MSI one. Uh, but I've uh, used these boards. They're very uh, well, well designed, well optimized, and very nice boards to use. So you have a 5600X with the 800X or any of the 5000 series with the G, with even with the new APUs or the 3000 series, a very nice motherboard to use. Then next up is the PS de Resistance, is the RTX 3060 Ti Gigabyte Gaming OC Pro. Um, this seems like a very solid GPU. Um, three fans, two slots, perfect for some of you ITX builders as well, or just building a classic uh, NZXT case or Corsair 4000 series or Fantex case or Lee and Lee's. Uh, this will still cool your card adequately as far as I can tell, but let's take a different angle and unbox this thing. All right, here's the box for the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti Gaming OC Pro 8 gig. On the side here, we have the blocked out serial numbers and barcodes because I don't want you guys finding out about this model and, you know, rip my warranty off. Here's the back with some uh, advertisements about the uh, WinForce 3X cooling system and the RGB Fusion 2.0. Then the other side with just the Gigabyte logo, the 3X WinForce and the 8 gig advertising and more NVIDIA branding. Then inside the box, we have another box that's matte black with thicker cardboard and the Gigabyte uh, logo spelled out in gloss black. Now that's the small box is out of the way, let's open the thicker box here. Open the flap. Then underneath, you will get a quick start guide by Gigabyte. Then under that, you will get a foam piece, very thick. Then we have another foam uh, template with the 3060 Ti sitting inside with a antiseptic bag. Now let's take it out of the packaging. Now let's take the Gaming OC Pro out of its bag. It's in an anti-static bag with a yellow sticker that says Gigabyte repeatedly. The adhesive can be tough sometimes, but once you get it off, it should be pretty much smooth sailing from there and just slide the GPU out of its bag. As you can see here, it is two slots, three fans long. And as you can see, it is mostly plastic shroud with plastic fans uh, with a metal back plate. And I can see the fans, the central fan is at a counterclockwise motion while the third and first fan is on a clockwise motion. Here is a side profile with GeForce RTX printed on the plastic shroud. Then further back, you see the eight pin and six pin power connectors uh, for powering the GPU from your power supply. And then the Gigabyte logo there is RGB. And that's pretty much it in terms of RGB on the card. Then behind that, on the backplate side, uh, it's a flow through design. So essentially, the PCB of the GPU itself is pretty short. So once it cuts off there, it's just pretty much heat sink and fan. So in terms of cooling performance, I'm hoping for good things out of it. But overall, um, mostly plastic. The only metal bits will be from the I.O. bracket in the back, uh, the backplate uh, on the other side of the GPU, and some of the parts on the uh, PCB itself. As for connectors, we have two display ports and two HDMI. So if you're hoping to run four or three displays with all display ports, unfortunately you're out of luck. But in terms of people running two monitors, both are viable options. All right, let's make some comparisons. Here is the EVGA Ordowin 3 XC Ultra. This, these are both 3060 Ti's, but the Gigabyte Gaming OC Pro is at 281 millimeters 117 millimeters and 40 millimeters in height. So essentially in terms of dimensions, both of these cards are almost the exact same. Same two slots, uh, almost 280 or slightly more millimeters in length and width wise, they're about the same. In terms of weight, they're pretty similar uh, from my bare hands. So that's all I can tell from the weight, but overall both seem like solid cards with small PCBs. All right, let's plug in this 3060 Ti to my test bench. 
In this test bench is my Ryzen 9 3900X, a 12 core, 24 thread processor from AMD from a couple years ago. On top of it is a Thermorite Peerless Assassin 120 CPU cooler. It is a dual tower 6 heat pipe cooler for about 40 to 45 bucks on Amazon and is on sale for cheaper for 5 bucks less. Attached to a motherboard, which is the ASUS B550 Tough Gaming Plus Wi Fi, which looks like a solid board. And then on top of that uh, is a 16 gig kit 2x86 of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 3200CL16 RAM with a NVMe SSD from Team Group at 1 terabyte, with an 850 watt power supply from EVGA 80 plus gold and attached to my Praxis wet bench from Primo Chill. Now that the GPU is all plugged in, let's flip the power switch and turn on the computer. All right, now that the PC is up and operational and drivers are in, let's do some benchmarks. First off, I did Heaven 4.0, um, it is a free DirectX 11 benchmark that you can grab online uh, for the demo model. So what I did was just ran um, at high presets, which is at 8x anti-aliasing, uh, 2160 by 1440p, um, at everything at high or extreme uh, details. And in this case, uh, there, we received an average FPS of 91. Uh, a 1% low of 39 FPS and a 0.1% low of 7 FPS. So in terms of 1440p performance, um, this was all right. Again, not high, uh, high FPS at 144, but however, if you use a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, it should help a lot in smoothing out, especially those 1 and 0.1% lows. Um, the GPU was maxed out uh, at 100%, uh, running at around 64 to 65 degrees Celsius. Now, let's move on to the next game. All right, next up is Valorant, one of the most popular titles out there right now, very reminiscent of CSGO with some Overwatch stuff. Overall, the game is great uh, with the 3060 Ti at 1440p. We're running with high settings uh, with NVIDIA Reflex turned off. That's the uh, NVIDIA technology that allows low latency um, for Valorant and other uh, competitive FPS shooters. Uh, in terms of frame rates, we are getting 195, 194 frames per second on average with a 1% low at 132 and a 0.1% low at 80. Overall, it's a very smooth, buttery game playing experience in Valorant here with the 3060 Ti at, the, at this resolution. Uh, so if you're really rocking a high refresh rate 1440p monitor and playing Valorant on your side time with high settings, overall it's going to be a great experience for you. All right, for our third benchmark is Apex Legends, another popular game outside of Valorant, R6, CSGO, Overwatch, Fortnite, and PUBG. Apex is running at currently at high settings across the board, except for very high uh, for VRAM usage and 16x on anti-trophic uh, rendering and anti-aliasing. So overall, we're averaging between around 130 FPS roughly with a 1% low at 92 FPS and a 0.1% low at 82 FPS. Overall, this GPU is sitting a little hotter around 62 degrees C, but overall it's still very reasonable. It's staying cool, it's fairly quiet, but overall if you're playing Apex, again, uh, like the other games on a decent 1440p monitor, it's gonna be a great buttery experience in my opinion. Now let's move on to our last benchmark. All right, here is our last benchmark. It is Cyberpunk 2077, the newest game out there, AAA title that's the most graphically intense out there. It's like the new Crisis. So in Cyberpunk 2077, we are running at high or very high settings with ray tracing set to ultra and DLSS set to off. And despite DLSS being off and all the uh, other settings being cranked up, we're still getting around 50 frames per second average with a 40 frame per second 1% low and 13 FPS at 0.1%. So essentially, in terms of performance, it's not great. It's um, not shooting for the high refresh rate or frame rate that you're going for, but over, I think that's not the kind of game Cyberpunk is. Cyberpunk is a game for you to have fun, be rambunctious, and enjoy the story um, and the side quests. So 
if you're willing to dumb down or even turn off outright ray tracing, uh, drop the settings from say high to medium or a high medium mixture for 1440p gameplay, I think overall you're going to have a great experience and have still have fun with Cyberpunk 2077 because it's such a beautiful eye candy catching game. Uh, but now that we wrapped up on all of our benchmarks, let's move on to other things. Hey guys, time for some other details and information about this 3060 Ti Gaming OC Pro from Gigabyte. This is actually their Revision 3.0 card. So what does that mean? Gigabyte's Revision 3 card for this model is uh, coming included with a limit hash rate limiter. So what does that mean? So it's a GIMP in terms of hash rate for Ethereum uh, at the hardware and software level rather than the software level from the 3060 lineup. Um, so in terms of mining, it was supposed to be reduced severely by 50% or more, but that's total BS, guys. Um, currently, the crypto community has already uh, brought this baby back up to around, I'd say, 75% of Ethereum mining performance. And if Ethereum and when do they go to proof of stakes, um, there's still other crypto. There's Ravencoin, there's Ergo, and several others in the crypto community uh, or cryptocurrency lineup that uh, GPU mining in the Ampere cards will still be very, very good. So um, if you're a miner, you know, good for you. But if you're uh, also good for you, if you're a gamer who mines on the side, but if you're just a straight up game who don't want to mine and you somehow still think it, it puts the card in jeopardy, um, again, tough, tough luck, you know, because Nvidia kind of marketed as miners won't buy it. They'll still buy it, if I'm being quite honest. Um, so hence the revision 3.0 labeling, but again, limited hash rate, uh, but I don't think it really matters. Um, now for the performance in terms of benchmarks, it's awesome guys in terms of 1440p with, uh, very, very high settings. Um, and if, if you want to do it yourself, lower your settings yourself to get better performance, it's a solid GPU. Uh, and you see in cyberpunk, it runs a little too weakly for that game, but Again, what GPU cannot do that on Cyberpunk? But overall, if you're looking for a great game experience in many of the current games or previous games, this card will not fail you. It's an awesome card for 1440p, and if you're playing a 1080p, also a solid card as well. Now for cooling performance. Again, it's only a two-slot card, guys. Two slots, metal heatsink, and the PCB is small that you have the flow-through design here. So. Performance wise, it's great. It never got past 65, 64 degrees C uh, on the GPU. VRAM is very reasonable. It's not super hot like some of the 3080 and 3090 models with the 6X uh, VRAM memory. Um, overall, it's a great card. Uh, performing wise, uh, I really don't care if the main shroud is plastic. You know, it hasn't broken on me since, and I don't hear like the, the creaking so far. So, very solid. Um, as for some other details, it is a quiet card uh, when under load up to 65 degrees C uh, on the GPU die. Um, I've got about 35 to 36 decibels uh, from my mobile phone app, uh, Decibel Reader. Uh, while it is not a very accurate platform, it's close enough and very reasonable and you know, noise wise it's reasonable for an open air test bench. Um, as for uh, a concern I have, or at least for my model, coil line this thing had a audible coil line when you load into games particularly load into like a loading screen with no fps limitations like in valorant or apex or c or uh, cyberpunk or csgo however i will note um if you set your settings like you know limit the fps in your menu screens and li limit your fps in games such as csgo and valorant particularly you know not trying to shoot for 200 frames per second or more it goes away and another method too, um, it, you can try your hand at it and it won't hurt, is undervolting. You can uh, lower the power and voltage for your GPU, but still get similar clock speeds and performance. Uh, and maybe, you know, it could be a one or two percent difference uh, lowered, but overall it's still gonna work great in all your games and undervolting may help with a uh, coil one. But at least for this model, there is coil one from my testing. But if you do get one, unfortunately, a lot of manufacturers consider coil one not warrantyable that that's a word you can't warranty it or rma it so you're stuck with it so try these other solutions in your in-game settings 
uh, make sure you get the up-to-date drivers, but also um, you can certainly undervolt uh, this GPU. But overall, that's all the things I want to make note of for this GPU. Overall, it is, I'd say, an amazing product so far. Um, uh, so you're looking to upgrade or build a new computer with this particular GPU and you're able to get your hands on one from Best Buy, Micro Center, Newegg, Amazon, or any other reseller or, or seller out there. Um, great card. Um, so my final advice is this. If you get your hands on this card right here, game, work, or school by day, then by night, mine with nice hash with nice hash miner to mine ethereum ergo ravencoin and many other cryptos because by doing that you can earn back the value that you paid for because remember it's supposed to be a 400 gpu but it's selling for 570 on newegg and maybe more expensive on other platforms and scalped poorly on ebay right now but if you're able to mine that money back in the next month few months or so i'd say it's a worthy investment but overall uh to close out great GPU, enjoy it, game, mine, whatever the hell you want to do. But uh, to wrap up, I'll see you guys next time in another vlog or video. Uh, in terms of Gundam content and other content like my marching band stuff, uh, more are coming. Uh, still uh, trying to get through many other projects and uh, life currently and also some traveling. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like the content, please uh, subscribe down below. It helps me a lot uh like the video comment gets the algorithm going and if you have any friends that are interested or like my content sharing with us because the more views we get the more it helps the channel but again thank you for your time guys thank you for watching this vlog and sort of review and showcase for this gpu and i'll see you guys next time